On today's episode, Tesla reveals a new 4680 battery update, there's nothing finer than being in your diner, and some major new software updates are coming soon to Tesla vehicles. Tesla has a brand new version of their 4680 battery cell on the way that will totally change the EV industry and break America's battery dependence with China. This is the LFP4680. We are getting this information from a Tesla patent filing that was released on January 16th under the World Intellectual Property Organization, and it's all about manufacturing LFP cathode material. This is also known as a lithium iron phosphate battery cell, which essentially just replaces all of the very expensive and difficult to source nickel, cobalt, and aluminum from a battery cathode and replaces it with simple, abundant iron. Of course, there's a trade-off. You can't make high-performance vehicles with super long range using LFP chemistry, but when it comes to economy-focused vehicles, the iron-based cell works just fine. Because of this advantage, LFP has quickly become one of the most popular electric car battery formats around the world, so it's essentially an easy way to make electric cars that cost less, but there's a catch. The vast majority of LFP battery production has been centered in China. The Chinese company CATL, the world's largest battery producer, has held a patent on the LFP battery process for many years, but those patents have recently expired and it's opened up the market. Now Tesla is jumping in on that opportunity. Tesla has been using CATL-made LFP battery cells in the Model 3 and Y since 2021, and most of the vehicles made at Giga Shanghai are equipped with these battery packs. But this has proven to be a major complication in the USA. The Inflation Reduction Act that was signed into law August 2022 created major tax credits for automakers who use battery cells that are made primarily in North America, using raw materials sourced from within North America, effectively penalizing the use of Chinese batteries like LFP. Now, Donald Trump will probably cancel tax credits associated with electric cars, but he's also preparing significant import tariffs on Chinese battery materials, so this doesn't take the pressure off of a need to begin making LFP chemistry in America. So, that's exactly what Tesla is planning to do here. They are finalizing a new method to produce iron-based battery cathodes in-house, and they'll be doing that using their own 4680 cylindrical battery cell format, in addition to some more traditional battery formats as well. This move has been confirmed on X by Drew Baglino, Tesla's former VP of Powertrain Engineering. He hasn't worked at Tesla in almost a year, so that tells us that this plan has been in place for a long time now. Drew writes, the patent describes a more scalable, lower capital investment and lower process cost means of making LFP. Would be prudent for the new LFP supply chains developing in the US and Europe to adopt this approach when localizing. Fully scaled can be lower cost than untariffed LFP from China. He also includes a bunch of technical jargon that we won't get into, but the key point here is that this method will render a battery cell that is cheaper than what China is selling even if tariffs were not a factor. So according to Drew, Tesla has been working on solving LFP for a while, and they have a fresh patent, but how much progress has the company actually made so far? Our friend Jordan from The Limiting Factor discovered this trail of breadcrumbs on LinkedIn that seems to prove Tesla has already run LFP cathode production tests for the past three years. This is coming from the profile of someone who claims they worked as a senior materials engineer at Tesla from 2022 to 2023, and in their resume they specify led four LFP pilot trials and one LFP production trial. Using the numbers provided on LinkedIn, Jordan was able to calculate the size of these trials. One of the test batches was 100 tons, which by my estimate is a 15 to 20 megawatt hour batch of cathode material, or enough for several hundred vehicles. This aligns pretty nicely with a report that we saw back in October 2024, a website called The Information claimed to have exclusive details on four new variants of Tesla 4680 battery cells that were in development and would be hitting the market by 2026. These would be evolutions of the existing battery format into more specialized chemistry types. One of those rumored 4680 variants was called NC05 or New Cell 5, referred to as a workhorse cell that will power the robotaxi, the Cybertruck, the Semi, and a fourth unknown vehicle, which has since been revealed as the Robovan. Since this range covers everything from Tesla's smallest vehicle to their largest, 
and primarily includes commercial service vehicles, the assumption was the workhorse NC05 would be LFP chemistry based. And it also suggests that there will be lower range, more affordable variants of both the Cybertruck and Semi in the near future. Looking at the timeline projection for the new LFP4680, it would make sense that these new cells will debut with the production run of the CyberCab in 2026 and will greatly contribute to maintaining a price target on that vehicle well below $30,000 US dollars. Did you know that just last year Tesla shipped over 300 new features to their customers via free over-the-air software updates? Now, we've got some time until the big spring update release drops, but since Tesla is constantly messing around with their owner experience, mostly for the better, of course, we've been able to uncover some new updates coming soon. This week, we got a peek at the experience Tesla is gearing up for with their very first supercharging diner. This is hidden inside the latest Tesla iOS app update and uncovered by an account named at Tesla underscore app underscore iOS. What we are looking at is a unique new user interface for vehicles arriving at the Tesla diner. This graphic will be the icon for the feature in the app where you can order food and request other services right from your phone. There will be a choice called view menu and amenities in the app. The timing is perfect since the Tesla diner is getting close to being ready. Today, we're seeing the site with two massive 45-foot outdoor LED screens, V4 superchargers, and the stainless steel retro diner building, all near completion. Here's a flyover video from 247 Tesla channel from a month ago, and here's what the site is looking like about three weeks ago. The first time we heard about this plan was six years ago, in January 2018, when Elon posted, gonna put an old-school drive-in, roller skates, and rock restaurant at one of the new Tesla supercharger locations in LA. He followed it up with, and an outdoor screen that plays a highlight reel of the best scenes in movie history. To a question on whether you'll be able to order food from the Tesla screen, Elon replied already back then, good idea, we can just have the menu pop up as soon as you put the car into park. So you can see how all this has been brewing for six whole years already. Then in May 2022, the plans for the diner surfaced through permit applications. Here's the best rendering, which has its own set of little Easter eggs. This was done in 2022 by Ed Howard. In 2023, we saw one of Tesla's own renderings on Rebecca Tanucci's presentation at Tesla Investor Day, labeled, Can't Forget to Do Cool <laughs> Building plans reveal that Tesla intends to operate the restaurant and charging station 24-7, but the two outdoor movie screens will be limited to between 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily. Perhaps the best way to imagine it comes from Elon's post in August 2023 where he says, Our Tesla futuristic diner, Grease Meets the Jetsons with Supercharging in LA, should be ready later this year. Side note, it was not in fact ready later that year, nor the year after that, but we do think that 2025 really is the year we'll see the Tesla diner at 7001 Santa Monica Boulevard in LA open its doors. As another breadcrumb, about five months ago, Tesla posted a job opening for a Tesla diner experience specialist. The job description says, the primary responsibilities will focus on managing audio-visual experience, content programming, digital experience, menu reviews, and providing coverage support for the location manager responsible for the facility and asset management. Oh, and that somehow earns up to $205,000 annually, plus cash and stock awards, plus benefits. Speaking of updates, Tesla keeps going. Another breadcrumb on the latest iOS app in addition to the diner thing was the fact that Tesla is finally about to implement ultra-wideband support for Android phones, something it added for iOS users almost a year ago. Ultra-wideband allows for much more accurate phone tracking, leading to new features and a more reliable phone key. This will also mean hands-free trunk opening and automatic trunk opening for the eligible models. This app update is also adding a new interesting flag called Show NFC Prompt. It seems Tesla is going to be adding a prompt to the app that will help people get back into their vehicles when their phone key fails. On the official launch side of things, Tesla launched a bigger holiday update in China to celebrate the Chinese New Year. For example, the navigation now has more routing options to choose from, like fastest time, least congestion, lowest tolls, or prefer highways. Also approaching a highway service area in China will now automatically open an on-screen prompt directing you to restaurants, convenience stores, and charging facilities within the service area. 
Of course, if such pop-ups bother you, you will be able to disable that option as well. The update also brings an interesting China-specific feature, supercharger bollards, which are the automatically raised and lowered bollards to prevent other cars blocking supercharger stalls, can now be unlocked from inside the vehicle with a button popping up automatically. Previously, an owner would have to search for the specific bollard in the Tesla app. Coming back to the breadcrumbs in the code, the keen eyes have found that Tesla Insurance may soon offer an FSD discount for insurance. This means it'll take FSD usage into consideration, so your personal safety score may soon factor in the percentage of time that you use FSD compared to the time you drive manually. Earlier this month, Elon said on an X Live with Stagwell CEO Mark Penn at CES, You know, we, we feel confident in uh, passing the, uh, you know, basically, being better than human driving um, in a, about three months, basically Q2 of this year, if we feel confident of passing, uh, having a probability of, of, of accident that is better than the, the average experienced driver. Um, and then and then it'll keep going from there. Uh, ultimately, I, I think it's gonna be 10 times safer than a human driver, um, and then 100 times safer. Uh, like it's. To, to the point where really the, it, it just won't crash. Um, so, uh, and that's so. So and that's happening this year with, with with Tesla. So Tesla, and 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 this is a software update to you know our cars. So as as you experienced yourself, 